Howdy folks, Tex Scrubner here with Tex Scrubner Outdoors. Who's ready to make it weird? The reason that I say that we're going to make it weird is because we're going to be talking about spears and spear hunting. The simple fact of the matter is, spears are awesome. They are a primal and intimate weapon, and they harken back to adventure and survival. With that being said, we're going to make it weird because if you call up your local DNR or your local fishing game and you ask them what the legality of hunting with a spear in your area is, they're either going to hang up on you or they're going to treat you like you're quite foolish because Spears are illegal in much of the United States for native game species. The reason that they're illegal, simply put, is because they are so low percentage. You have to be close, you have to make a good throw, and you have to throw good with enough power to be able to penetrate the vital organs. And the simple fact of the matter is, for Joe Blow Compound Bow to think that he's going to go out with a spear in his tree stand and take down a white tail. Whether it is ethical or not, the fact of the matter is, in much of the United States, it's illegal because it is so low percentage. However, I have a fascination with spears because, of course, Outside of the fact that they're a phallic symbol, we're being grown-ups here, they are an intimate weapon, because you have to be so close. I'm talking being able to hear that animal's heartbeat close. On the ground, I would say that it would be nigh on impossible to be able to sneak up on a whitetail with a spear. Maybe you could get one under your tree stand if you were lucky. I know that it has been done. But again, spears are illegal in almost all of the states because they're so low percentage for native game. Now, you can go to an exotic game ranch and spear throw your little heart out, but the sad fact of the matter is because it's a high-fenced operation, you're not really going to get the credit that you deserve because it's a captive animal. So before you get into spears, I don't want you running out there and buying a spear, taking it to the woods and getting busted by a game ranger. You have to be educated on the legalities of spear hunting in your area or whatever area you would want to go with your spear. And spears are difficult to use. I am not going to lie to you. I normally pull my spears out once a year to ensure that I have not lost my touch. But that's not good enough. If I actually knew that I could go hunt with a spear, I would be throwing almost every day. Because... Spears are an intimate weapon that require mastery. It is an insult to First Nation type cultures around the world that still use the spear either for protection or hunting or the atlatl in any form for protection, war, or hunting. For a survivalist to say, oh, you're going to go out, you're going to make a spear, you're going to hunt game. It doesn't work like that. Here's a reality check. Peoples and cultures that hunt with spears, that live and die by their spears, have been using that spear as long as they have been old enough to wield it. Now, for instance, let me give you a little bit of history. I said that you have to get close. One method that the ancient Celtic cultures, or Paleo-Celtic cultures, one method that they used in order to get close enough to their large deer, and oddly enough, 
they worship the deer. Kuranos, the stag-faced god of the hunt and of the wilderness, which is my birth sign by the Celtic Zodiac. But they would go out with a deer-antlered headdress wrapped in a stag robe, and they would wade out into marshes or walk around the woods and literally walk up on animals in a deer suit. And as long as that gigantic stag within the Irish or English countryside or Scottish or Wales countryside, as long as that stag saw them from the front without depth perception, they could literally walk up with a great amount of stealth and be able to bring that thing down with a thrown spear from a heartbeat distance. Now, of course, everyone is familiar with the Maasai Lion Hunters, if you've seen Ghost in the Darkness. That, personally, would be a dream of mine, to hunt the lion with the Maasai. However, this is not a Maasai spear. This is a spear made by cold steel, and it is a copy of the Zamburu spear. And this is a throwing spear. I would like to eventually get my hands on a European spear made by cold steel. But the fact of the matter is, when Paleo-Celtic cultures, or Paleo-cultures in general, hunted with the spear pre atlatl they were hunting animals, largely, that were massive megafauna that had absolutely no reason to fear humans. They had not evolved a flight zone yet. You want to know why it's hard to get close to a whitetail on the ground? They have coexisted with human beings on this continent for a very long time. And they have a flight zone that is unbelievable, which makes the idea of spear hunting a whitetail on the ground practically ludicrous. But by all means, when the world goes to hell, pick up your spear and go out and try and spear a whitetail. But we hunted animals that were massive. I have used an atlatl. Artisan Tony was kind enough to buy me an atlatl. My neighbor's dog chewed up my atlatl darts, by the way. But I was never able to develop any element of mastery with it. But with that being said, I would say that my lethality with this Samburu spear is max of 15 yards. My comfort zone is kind of getting stretched at about, I'd say, 12 yards. With all that being said, I hope that this has been educational and somewhat mystical because I did manage to find a beautiful place to film this. But who's ready for a little bit of spear throwing? Now the reason that I introed the video up there is this is what is known as an arroyo. Paleo Indians on the American continents used arroyos for spear hunting. They would chase the animals up into a washout, they would corral them, and they would slaughter them with either spears or atlatls. An atlatl, of course, is basically a javelin on a throwing board, and it was not about sport for those Paleo-Indian type cultures. It was about going to the grocery store. For me, I can honestly say that this is a primal and intimate weapon that not only demands my respect, but it demands my mastery. But I wanted to put a little bit of a storyline behind why I actually started the video 
where I did in a washed out arroyo. I mentioned megafauna. Now currently large hooved game animals are about as close as we can come these days to megafauna. This here is your standard crossbow stop by Hurricane. This is pretty much roughly the size of the vital organs broadside on a megafauna type critter like a buffalo being water buffalo or cape buffalo or an American bison. But this, if you can hit this, then sure, you could kill megafauna with a spear or an atlatl. But the fact of the matter is, this is the size of a kill zone on minor type fauna, like of course a bear or a whitetail. Elk is slightly larger, but the point is, just being able to hit that bag isn't good enough. Also, I'm going to be using a double practice point side because frankly this I know from experience tears up 3D critters. Also, angle is very important with a spear because you want the angle to be very steep. You want it to go in on the top of the shoulder, on top of the lungs, and come straight through and out the bottom side. So hitting it here and then coming straight through out the bottom side is pretty much what you want. You want it on the top side because the angle of the spear, unlike an arrow that is going to have a much more flat trajectory, especially because it is not a muscle-powered missile. But your spear is going to be hitting right about here. Now I'm going to intentionally try and hit the kill zone just for bragging rights, but ideally on minor fauna, you would want to be hitting on top of the lung right about here rather than down here on the IBO. So anyways, I've got a practice spear back there. I've yacked at you enough, enough of the storyteller mamma jamma. Who's ready to for real this time make it weird? Now I could take you out and just throw into some hay bales and we'll make believe we're hunting the megafauna. But for the time being, we have stalked this salmon stream. Yes, there's salmon in that stream. And we found a Kodiak brown bear, roughly 10 yards, maybe 11, that was fishing. And your fearless hero has stalked within spear range. Well, that should have taken him down. Hopefully, Mr. Smokey the Bear ran in the opposite direction. But that was practically a perfect throw. As you can see here, I'm just slightly, I'm breaking the line of the kill zone, but I definitely from the angle that the spear entered would have hit the top of the lung and passed through down into the bottom of the back lung. But keep in mind, you may get to see me miss, because as I said, 
Spears are very low percentage. Now you may notice, spears take a large amount of movement. And you just saw me get tangled up in some brush behind me, which makes spears very difficult to use. And sometimes everything goes right. Man, I couldn't have paid for a throw as good as that. Quarter in away. Perfect angle. Perfect trajectory. Eating bear bacon and I, Dan Boone. That is, if he didn't kill me before he dropped. I might be crazy, but I'm not stupid. If you're going to spear hunt, do it legally and carry a backup gun. That's a good high throw, and the trajectory would have hit the top lung on the front and the bottom of the lung on the back. Good quartering away throw. But ethics are incredibly important because, as I said, I'm out here playing around. If I were to actively go spear hunting, if I ever had the opportunity, I would train for months and months until I could do it instinctually. Because an animal in that moment of truth deserves my best rather than a lucky throw. So keep watching. Maybe someday I might get to take a spear hunt. That's another really good hit. High on the body so that the trajectory would carry the spear into the bottom of the back lung. Just to give you a quick look at this, this right here is what I'm talking about. High on the body, so that the angle of the spear would have come out down here. Well, not exactly just over the vitals, but with a spine hit, I guarantee you 
that that bear was not going anywhere. That's a pretty good throw. That's about perfect right there. At least perfect as far as getting into the kill zone. Damn, that was a good throw. A little far back. But at least I had a good angle of trajectory. I figure one more throw, end on a high note. As always, God bless all my sportsmen of America. Join the NRA to protect our rights. Please check out my friends over at LegallyConcealed.org. Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching Tech Scrabner Outdoors. When in doubt, make it weird. <laughs>